I'm going to let you in on a little secret. You don't have to use the lowest ISO for your images anymore. Oh my gosh! In years past, high ISO was an absolute image destroyer. But, you know, sometimes you just had to use it. A definite, like, in case of emergency, break glass. Use high ISO. But I'd rather have a grainy image than a blurry one that's headed straight for the trash. But why did I, like, always advocate using low ISOs? Because they're cleaner images. They produce cleaner images with less noise. And that is still absolutely true. You get cleaner images with lower ISOs. But there are drawbacks to always using ISO 100. Y you need a tripod, like, almost all the time. <laughs> my tripod was attached to my hip. Tripods are cumbersome, they're difficult to travel with, and they can certainly be heavy, although there are some great alternatives nowadays. But recent advances in cameras and software technologies has made it so that we don't have to fear high ISO noise quite so much. Let me show you a couple of my favorite programs to reduce noise, and we'll test even an image that's been taken at ISO 10,000 right at the end, so stay tuned for those results. So here's an old photo of my son at an aquarium. It's a dark environment. I had to handhold because there's no tripod use, no flash. It's an older camera. This child is driving now, so you can tell how old this is. The noise is just awful, and it was tough to deal with, you know, 13, 14 years ago, but I'd rather have this noisy photo of this amazing moment than to have that blurry one because I had to use too slow of a shutter speed that I ended up, you know, just tossing it in the trash. This is a precious moment. But here we are years later and I can finally rescue this image properly. So Lightroom's new denoise capabilities are absolutely fantastic. And I also use a program called Topaz Photo AI. There's a link in the description. Because look at what these things can do now. They totally rescued this image. It looks better now than it did 13 years ago. Why do we want to shoot at p potentially a higher ISO? What are the advantages? It allows you to use faster shutter speeds to freeze action. I've been spending a lot of time lately at a local bird rookery to capture images of the great blue herons and the great egrets in their nesting season. Now, arriving at dawn, or even before dawn, there's not a lot of light to work with, and but there is a lot of action going on. So I need shutter speeds in the 1 1,000th range or faster to freeze birds in motion. Now, if I were hand-holding, 1 1,600th is probably my minimum for my 200 to 600 on a crop sensor to capture sharp images of birds in flight, but that's just because I'm a little shaky. So lately, I've been using the following settings. So I've been in manual mode, and I use my maximum aperture. My shutter speed is set at 1 1200th or 1 1600th of a second. And then I let the ISO float. I put it on auto ISO. I just let the camera do the fast paced thinking for me, and every shot I took was sharp. Granted, they weren't all good, but they were sharp. Now, I never used to use auto ISO. I mean, never. I was afraid that it would just go too high and it would ruin the photo. But let's see this recent one that I took at ISO 8000 and let's process it. Okay, I'm going to quickly run two images through both Lightroom Denoise AI and Topaz Photo AI and compare the results. Let's start with Lightroom Denoise on an image that I took at ISO 8000 from my Sony A6700 crop sensor camera. The Denoise is located under the detail panel and I'm just gonna leave it at its default setting for both images and both programs, just as kind of like a base comparison. I really like the results that I'm seeing in the preview, so I'm gonna go ahead and click Enhance and wait about you know 30 seconds on my computer, it could be longer for others, for it to process. Okay, so here's the original, and here's the enhanced with Lightroom Denoise. That's pretty impressive. Okay, so let's process this in Topaz Photo AI, but in order to do that as a raw file, 
you can't just right click on it and say edit in because it will convert it to a TIFF first with a little bit of compression and I don't want to do that. I want to process it as a raw file. So if I want to compare, you know, apples to apples, a raw process versus a raw process, I need to take an extra step. So in order to do that, I go to file and then plug in extras and process with Topaz Photo AI. And that way it will treat it as a raw file and it will result in a DNG. And one of the things that I like about Topaz Photo AI is while it's analyzing it for noise, it's analyzing it for everything else too, including sharpening. So if it thinks that this image needs some sharpening, it will automatically apply it. Wow, that's kind of amazing. All right, let's zoom in a little bit for more detailed analysis. Okay, this software is just insane. I love it. All right, let's add a little bit of sharpening just to see what we get. Nice. And then you can actually take it a step further. You can apply a mask so that the sharpening is only applied to the subject because I don't really like to sharpen my backgrounds. If I want a nice blurry background, I want that to remain soft. So I only want to sharpen my subject. And that's what I did here. Now it's going to give you a huge file when it's done, but you know, nowadays this is just kind of something that I've learned to live with. Huge files, lots of data and lots of backup storage. Okay, so back in Lightroom, let's look at a 200% preview to really analyze this. So here's the original raw file. Here's the Lightroom Denoise Enhanced. And here's the Topaz Photo AI DNG file, which is a raw file. Now, in this case, I, I really like the Topaz version the best. And I, you know, maybe it had to do with that little extra step of sharpening. But let's really push these programs and just take an image with double that ISO at 16,000. Now, what caused me to be at, at ISO 16,000? Because like I said, I had that on auto ISO. It was because I had a shutter speed of 1 1600th of a second. It, did I really need that on a tripod? Probably not. I probably could have gotten like two stops less if I had just done a slower shutter speed, which was the 1600th was not necessary here. But it ended up making for a really good example uh, for this comparison. Again, we are starting with Lightroom's denoise in the default setting. Let's see what we get. Wow, that is impressive. Look at the detail in that face after cleaning up an ISO of 16,000. Good grief. Okay, so here's the raw and the Lightroom denoise added. That That's kind of awesome. <laughs> 16,000 ISO. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to bring this into Topaz again as a raw image, and I'm just going to leave everything at the default and see what it gives me. Okay, if I'm going to be honest, I think this time the Lightroom version looks better. The Topaz Photo AI caused a little bit of color fringing along the crown of the egret. This is not something that would bother me for social media posts, but definitely something that would show up on a print, and, and by that time it, it's too late. <laughs> it's printed and it would really bug me. I like having more than one tool in my editing toolbox for situations like this so that I can compare and, and really get the best result possible for each image. Again, there's a link for Topaz Photo AI in the description. If you're struggling a bit understanding shutter speeds, aperture, how to get better exposures, check out this playlist right here for beginners. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. <laughs>